So we met years ago yes. when um, I think both Larry Ellison and Mark Benioff introduced me to you when your father was sick. Yeah, 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 that's right. And obviously I saw the caring you had for him, I saw the respect you had for him, and you did something you know, in honor of your father to respect your father, which was create a biotechnology company with a remarkable new drug on cancer. That's not a normal response to a tragedy is to try to do something to help others. What, explain to us a little bit. I mean, you gotta have to understand, Mikitani is, it created Rakuten, which is one of the great companies in Japan. It was in the Wall Street Journal two days ago. He was the largest shareholder of Lyft that just went public last week. He's creating a new, whole new way of doing telephone network, uh, networks that will be in Asia and hopefully global soon. He is a technology pioneer, yet you got into biotechnology. Yeah, what a you know, funny story, right? <laughs> well, you know, um, so it was my kind of personal reason. Uh, my father was diagnosed as, as a uh, very difficult uh, pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind, kind of crazy entrepreneur. And I initially thought there should be some new ongoing development of a new uh, advanced treatment to you know, basically cure uh, the uh, pancreatic cancer. So I contacted you, I went to UCSF, I went to Harvard, I went to you know, the Columbia University, I went to Paris University. I literally did uh, the, all this research uh, in my capacity as much as I can. But I couldn't find any really uh, you know, uh, good looking uh, cure. And, and, but interestingly, uh, one of my friends uh, called me, and uh, he was also the friend of my father. And he said, hey, Mickey, I heard the very bad news about your father having a very difficult cancer. By the way, uh, my cousin is uh, this, doing this new project, uh, trying to cure uh, the cancer with light. And I said, I was desperate, right? And I initially thought, oh, it's kind of, it's, it, this must be a joke. Curing the cancer with light. Uh, but I was desperate, so I said, okay, I'm gonna have a meeting with him. And then, uh, you know, I thought, uh, this is completely, to totally different approach. And, uh, you know, uh, it may work. So, what he's talking about is something called photoimmunotherapy. And I think the best way to show it is a quick video. Can we go to the video? I don't know where I'm supposed to point. <laughs> Photoimmunotherapy is a new precision anti-cancer treatment platform under development by Rocket and Medical, consisting of tumor targeting antibody conjugates that can be illuminated at the tumor site using non-thermal red light. Treatment of patients with cancer is initiated with an intravenous infusion of the antibody conjugate. It distributes systemically and accumulates at the tumor, where it attaches to specific antigens present on the surface of tumor cells. After infusion of the conjugate, the patient undergoes photoimmunotherapy treatment by illuminating the tumor with non-thermal red light to transiently excite the antibody conjugate to elicit anti-cancer activity. A laser is used as the light source. Superficial tumors are illuminated with frontal diffusers. Deep subcutaneous and large tumors are illuminated with cylindrical diffusers inserted into catheters placed using image guidance. Total illumination lasts about five minutes for each treated region. Antibody conjugates bound to the antigen on the cancer cells are transiently excited upon non-thermal red light illumination to induce a biophysical process that compromises the membrane integrity of cancer cells, leading to cancer cell death and tumor necrosis with minimal effects on surrounding normal tissue. Moreover, this mechanism of action may activate immune cells such as antigen-presenting cells and NK cells, and may stimulate tumor-specific cytotoxic T cells. All right, so 
an idea, photoimmunotherapy, you go through clinical trials, it's now in phase three clinical trial yes. in head and neck cancer, and how's it going? I think it is going well. Well, of course, uh, you know, I think we are moving uh, pretty fast, I think, uh, and internally, uh, we have a very strong confidence. So we heard before, we were talking to one of the CEOs of, or the head of R&D of a pharmaceutical company, and they said, the current hit rate is 10%. You know, if this works, you'll be 100% one for one, which is pretty wild if you think about it. When did you start? So what's the time frame from beginning till now? Uh, beginning, uh, we started our, uh, the phase one clinical study three years ago, maybe. Three years ago. Yeah. And, and so the idea is you put in this antibody, you activate it with this light, yeah. and then the tumor shrinks. You know, what we in the cancer field dream of is something called the abscopal effect. Yes. Which is where you can kill one lesion, right. but the immune response to this lesion that cures away the cells will cure away or attack other lesions also. Right. And so that's the dream, especially now with immunotherapy right. where we can make immune responses even greater. Mm. That dream's becoming a reality in some cases, but you've seen some benefits? We are in a clinical trial. <laughs> Got it. Okay. My regulatory guys are, you know, you know, warn me to. Yes. You can say this. You cannot say this. Uh, and but I, I think, uh, you know, uh, to, to just summarize it, uh, the, the mechanism uh, we are, uh, you know, conducting, are uh, very different uh, from, oh, from even other immunotherapy, um, and I think. Uh, we have seen uh, some cases uh, which were very difficult to see in, in, in traditional approach. Uh, and I personally uh, invested uh, over $200 million into uh, this company, uh, believing uh, this will be uh, one of the breakthroughs for cancer therapy, including what you just mentioned. That's fantastic. And so, Obviously, you know, the world hopes this works. We need new ways to treat cancer. But your background is very different. Um, you know, you own a soccer team. <laughs> you're investing in tennis. You obviously have rock baton. Doing so many things doesn't overwhelm you? Oh, well, I'm a crazy entrepreneur, uh, and I love business. Uh, but I think this project is very different from other projects, right? Of course our major network operator business is going to be, I think, the game changer for 4G and 5G businesses. Uh, but this is far more uh, important than anything else. This is, of course, uh, in cooperation, but at the same time, this is kind of a you know, philanthropic uh, project for myself uh, to kind of revenge to the cancer, which uh, you know, took uh, the life away from my father. I, I mean, it's certainly a beautiful story. I was called by a number of people in Silicon Valley who invested. And right. go, what do you think about this? I go, I don't know. It's, you know, Mikitani, it's a technology company. And then we had dinner. Right. And, you know, what's interesting, a bunch of scientists around the table. Right, right. And you're the one who showed me the data. Right. I saw your passion. I saw your excitement around the data and the science. And it certainly was beautiful to watch. How did you teach yourself about antibodies, about <laughs> immune cells, about cancer? How did you learn all this? Well, you know, I take notes. <laughs> Uh, I Google all these uh, <laughs> words, you know, which is very, very strange to ordinary people. Uh, and also, if I, I'm just, uh, you know, to be honest to my uh, colleagues, the scientists and doctors, and tell them, I don't understand, please teach me. Right. Uh, but I have been doing this for five years. Uh, at this moment, uh, I'm reasonably knowledgeable. Uh, and sometimes I have a, you know, a fresh eye whereby the traditional uh, the people in this industry are kind of trapped by uh, the conventional wisdom. I think I have uh, kind of amateur fresh eye uh, to find the possibility. And I was probably, uh, you know, ignorant enough to bet on this one. And, the, and I think the, in my personal opinion, the future looks very good. What would your father say if he knew you were doing this now? Well, I hope he will be proud of it, uh, and I hope, my, sincerely hope this will work. And uh, not for my father, but we are hoping we will be able to save, uh, you know, millions of people. That's beautiful. Mm. Um, the company is based in San Diego. Yes. And the technology, where did it come from? Where did you find this? 
Yeah, so everything is connected as, you know, uh, uh, the, I was uh, listening to the speech of uh, Sip Jobs, who yeah. was your pa uh, patient, right? Uh, he said everything is connected. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was originally uh, introduced uh, from my friend, who is also the sponsor of my uh, football team. Right. <laughs> or soccer team, as we soccer say team. here. Yes. Soccer team. <laughs> uh, so, and he was very close uh, to uh, my father, too. Mm -hmm. And the researcher uh, is a Japanese researcher at the uh, National Institute of Health, or NCI. In, in Bethesda. Yes. Right. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Hisataka Kobayashi. He's also from Kobe, from where I grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's my personal friend. Uh, and, but, you know, nobody really believed. So this company was running out of money. Uh, like the company who he licensed up was running out of money. Uh, they were so desperate. And I didn't know whether it's going to work or not, not by first giving them like $20 million to them to keep, you know, doing research. And now uh, yeah, we, we progress so much. So I think, you know, uh, definitely I'm not really uh, the pharma specialist, but I, I think I have um, kind of eye to re, uh, analyze uh, the theory uh, how it works, and, and hopefully it is going to work. As an outsider looking at this industry, biotechnology and the pharmaceutical industry, what do you observe? I mean, from our side, it looks rather inefficient. What does it look like to you? Well, of course, uh, the, this clinical uh, you know, trial and approval process is, is so long. Uh, and I understand uh, the sensitivity of the issues. But at the same time, now there are so many uh, innovations, new approach uh, taking place and being developed. Uh, and there are so, it, it is too expensive uh, to go through this, this process. So I think it is time for entire world to uh, reconsider. Uh, the, the traditional approach is the right way to do it. Or do we want it to be a little bit, uh, of course we need to be concerned about the safetyness, but other than that, this you know, small comparison of the data, it is going to be worth pursuing or not. To be, that's my candidate opinion. It's interesting. And have you seen patients yourself benefit? Did you actually meet the patients? Yes, in Japan. Oh, you did? Yeah. And what was that like? Well, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, they were uh, crying uh, and uh, in Japan, uh, because of the, the fact uh, the uh, initial uh, inventor of the technology is Japanese, it's very kind of very famous. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have been waiting to get treated for a long, long time. And so these are locally advanced head and neck cancers yes. where there's nothing else to treat them with a mass on their head, yes. on their neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, um, I, I think uh, she were, uh, the fam entire family was, were uh, very, very happy. Well, I think the world is happy, and I know your father is smiling down for what you've done. You know, something to honor him, which benefits humanity. And it's a remarkable thing you did, and hopefully this drug will benefit patients with cancer. So I and everybody thank you for what you're doing and admire you and what you are. Thank you very much. So thank you. Thank you.